What would be that mentality knowing that you going up north to play them? Will you sleep Friday night? Yeah, I sleep because I think that's the mindset I had all year, all, all season. That's how I wanted to be undefeated versus undefeated. So you sleep because you ain't worried? Yeah, I ain't, yeah, no, I ain't worried. That's what I prepare for all, all season, so that's exactly how I want it. That was just a bit of an interview that this man across from me, Keyshawn Johnson, did with Marvin Harrison Jr. The totality will air on Big Noon kickoff on Saturday ahead of Ohio State and Michigan, right on, uh, be on Big Fox, obviously. And Keyshawn Johnson, what was your biggest takeaway from that interview, that sit down you had with that young man? And you knew and know his father very well. He made me laugh because you said my first and last name, Skip. Mm. But uh, he's just impressive. I mean, his size, he looks just like his dad, his body structure, everything, except he's stretched. And I, and I told him that. You're, you're like stretched. Pops was a lot shorter, not as thick. Now, Marvin Harrison Jr. got all the same skill sets. He can go get it with the best of them. If you leave him single coverage, he's going to kill you. So I, I look, here's where we are with this draft stuff, Skip. We said last receiver to be taken number one overall was me. Okay, Kelvin Johnson should have been the number one overall pick potentially. You know, Randy Moss could have been. Yep. When you when you look at Marvin Harrison Jr., he's in line with all that to potentially be the number one overall pick in this year's April's draft, a, a 2024, 2024 that comes up. Yep. You say to yourself, okay, there's a lot of quarterbacks out there. It doesn't matter because teams that are at the top of the draft doesn't necessarily need a quarterback. When you look at Chicago sitting at number one, and I know everybody thinks that they're going to take a quarterback and move on from Justin Fields. I don't think so. I don't think they're moving on from Justin Fields. I saw Justin Fields the other day when he came back off injury play pretty good football. So you start to look at that. You say Chicago needs a, another home run hitter to go sure. along with Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. You grab a guy like Marvin Jr. Mm -hmm. Arizona got their quarterback, okay? If they, if they need a receiver to go along with Kyler Murray, who's going to be there for several more years. The Patriots, I don't know what, the, what what's going to happen with them sitting at the third spot as it stands today. Have no idea. Then the Bears again at the fourth spot. Mm -hmm. Then the Giants, they all need this type of guy to change what they do in the receiver room. Mm. So what do you think he goes now? Six what? He's 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three, yeah, he's 6'3". Two, 205. 205? Slim 205. Okay, but his father was way smaller. I, I think Marvin was went about 5'10", maybe 5'11", and about 175 pounds soaking wet on a rainy day. Yeah. But he can play. And that's all that really matters is he can play football. This kid is serious. No, yeah, he, he, he's for real. He I've, for I've real. watched him all the way since high he, school. He is as for real as Keyshawn was at USC. That's he looks, not real. He looks just like his dad, though. Yeah. God, he looked like his dad. All right, let's stay in college football. Let's talk Coach Prime. After that nation-rocking 3-0 start, Coach Prime's Colorado Buffaloes have fallen to 4-7 and seven with one game remaining at Utah. Colorado's a 21.5-point underdog at Utah. So, of course, the Dion Doubters, the Shadur Skeptics were out in full force on Twitter late Friday night as the Buffaloes were getting thrashed at Washington State 56-14. Yet, Dion remained extremely confident yesterday about what he's building at Colorado. And remember, the transfer po portal just opened again on December the 4th. So here's some of what Dion had to say yesterday. Mm. Dion, best interview in sports on a daily basis. Keyshawn, Keyshawn Johnson. How about that? <laughs> Do you consider Dion's first year at Colorado in the biggest picture success or failure? Success. It, it, you can't even put a number on the success, all right? He, he took over a program that won one game. One game. Yep. Okay? He's got him at four. And like he said at the end of that clip, whose expectations? Because he knew his team. He knew what he had. He said it from day one. But what happens in these situations, in a situation like this, is number one, he's Deion Sanders. Mm. So... Those people that are jealous or hate the fact that he was able to get a Power 5 job and immediately as soon as he had success at the HBCU level, he didn't have to do all of the things that they may have done just to get an opportunity. 
because he's Deion Sanders. He's prime. So they coming after the four wins and the seven or so losses. They're coming after that. They're saying, ah, oh, see, you started off, you were supposed to be this. It wasn't him ever saying that. It was us. It was me and you and, and Richard and Michael Irvin. We are the ones that's up there with the pom-poms because we wanted him to have even more success. Yep. We were rooting for him to go and beat certain teams and get into a postseason bowl. That's what we wanted for our own satisfaction, regardless to what the team may have looked like. We had the Colorado glasses on. We were not seeing straight. He was in the room. He had all the information. Mm. We didn't have all the information. We only had the information for what we saw. Oh, Shadur's really good. Shiloh's really good. Oh, we like this horn guy. Oh, this is, that's, that's what we saw. He's seeing and saying, eh, we need some more help over here. We need some more help over there. We are the ones that put the expectations on him, yep. which is unfair to him. Because what it does is it brings out, Richard, the naysayers and the haters and the jealousy and all of those mm. things. I'm with him 100%. It's going to be different now because people are seeing that he can turn things around. He didn't inherit a program. He didn't inherit Texas A&M. He didn't inherit Oregon. He didn't inherit USC. He inherited a team that was one and whatever at 11. That's, that's a team that he got. In that one win, I don't even know what it was against, but it probably wasn't a big program. So, hey, heck yeah, you almost made me curse, man. Mm. Heck yeah, he... he he did, he did exactly what he was supposed to do, man. See, yeah, I agree. I, I think I think this is a successful te season for the University of Colorado. I think they're happy with what has happened this year. They're selling out stadiums. There's excitement around the program. There are big-time recruits there. There are celebrities there. They're on national television almost every week, regardless of their record. The interest in this school is high, and as they transfer – to the Big 12 Conference, they have momentum. And it's not like, hey, this is a this is a down and out dead program that's a lame duck program that nobody's looking at, nobody's looking to come to. People are still excited. Sure, this was a team that we put expectations on, to Keyshawn's point. We put them on after they beat a ranked TCU team because they came out with low to no expectations and they had a big game. They overachieved in their first game and they overachieved in a number of games. They were in a dogfight with USC. They could have won the Stanford game and had five wins. And they had a number of other games that they, they were in and could potentially have been bowl eligible. So there is growth. But Prime said it before the season even started, that there, there were deficiencies on this roster that needed to be addressed before they were ever going to be considered a true contender. Both sides of the line, offensive and defensive line, needed to be addressed. And we saw that. We saw that deficiency. There were games Shador had... I mean, less than a second sometimes, a second and a half to process and throw the ball and get the ball off. He has the playmakers on the outside. But then again, Travis Hunter gets gets hurt for your toughest three game stretch of the season. And we're not talking about it. And so I think it's been a success. I think if now if this happens next year and they go four and eight next year after they get new pieces and after they have a recruiting class and that transfer class, then we're having a different conversation. But I don't think this is going to happen again. I think he's going to get the recruits that he's looking for. He's going to get the reinforcements. And they're going to have a bowl-eligible season next year, and that'll be success. All right. My turn. I'm going to take some blame for this. Keyshawn mentioned it. I'm culpable, too, because at 3-0 and after they beat Colorado State, it's not a great football team, but they beat them in two overtimes, and it was a great game to watch. And Shadur was really great late in that game. At 3-0, and I think I went to nine and three. I might have. Maybe it was eight and four. I think we, we all were, did that, you know, though. We were all there, right? <laughs> yeah, we were all. Okay. Because I would look down the schedule and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking through Dion colored glasses because I'm, I'm just, I, I, I just think he's a rare human and a rare football coach. And they did beat TCU, who played in the national championship game last year. They went there and beat them 45 to 42 on national TV. That's pretty great. They came home and beat a, just a decent Nebraska team, 36 to 14, with a new coach, but they beat them. Then I mentioned Colorado State, and now our hopes are ridiculously sky high, and they go to Oregon and they get their doors blown off. But we knew to that. Six. Well, I didn't think it was going to be 42 to 6. I didn't know that. Right. 
and then they come home, and we took our show there for Friday, and they play Keyshawn's Trojans. And you know what? They hung in there, and it was 48 to 41, as Richard pointed out. That, that, was, that was pretty good. They almost won the game. No, they had a chance. They had a late chance. Then they go to Arizona State, and now the more I look at it, I say, they went there and beat them. They beat a, a Pac-12 team at their place, 27-24, on a walk-off field goal. And then they come home. They're up 29 to nothing on Richard Stanford. 29 to nothing, and I, you got me. They blew it in the second half, and they lost in two overtimes. You got me. And, and then, yet, yeah, they, they go to UCLA, and they hung in there. It, it was a decent game. It was 28 to 16. Oregon State was a decent game at home, 26 to 19. Arizona was more than a decent game because it took a walk-off field goal for Arizona to beat them at Colorado, 34 to 31. And then we all talked about how hard it is to play up there. Pullman, Friday Pullman. night, it's cold, windy. They got romped and stomped. Okay, 56 to 14, and it was because Shadour got knocked out of the game in the second quarter. This young man took a hellacious beating all season long. And you can't tell me, if nothing else, he pr proved his quarterback toughness this year because Deion said yesterday he's probably too beat up to play against Utah because he just took a pounding all year. You realize they have, as we speak, allowed the most sacks in all of college football. The most sacks in all of college football, and you pair that up with the fact they have the least rush yards in all of college football. You want to talk about a lethal combination for a quarterback? You're giving up record sacks and you're giving up low record rushing yards. You, you, can't, you can't rush the football. So what, what, there, you, you can't take any pressure off Shadur. Their offensive line is, is pathetically mm -hmm. bad and it has no depth to it. So when starters got knocked out, you, you got much worse when the backup came in. And yet, look at Shadour's numbers for the year. He's 27 touchdowns to three interceptions. 27 to three, and you got sacked more than anybody? I, I loved how he played. No, I, he, I, play, he played yeah, great. Yeah, and, and I liked how he played at Washington State because he had a big touchdown pass to Travis Hunter early in that game and was 6 of 10 for 84 yards to start off with. And he just got pounded until he got knocked out of the game. And God bless him. I'm knocking on wood for him. I hope he's okay. Dion said he is not well, was his phrase yesterday. Think about, think about yeah. it, though, Skip, how you, how you read the schedule, the losses that they yeah. went through. I'll give you another little taste of that. USC is bowl eligible. UCLA ran shop on them. Okay? Colorado. On, 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 ran shop on, on USC. USC. They did. That, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. In Colorado, had USC stressed out they were stressed in the late out. fourth quarter at the end of that game. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about... The Stanford game, typically at 30 to nothing halftime, Lee, you turn, we going to do something else. Because, well, right? I mean, that's yeah. what we're going to do. As, as yeah. TV watches the football, we like, eh, we flipping the channel because you figure that's not going to happen. It's going to be over. They blew that. That was the first time since he's been the head coach that he's been up like that and surrendered a lead. For whatever reason, they didn't adjust in the second half the way they needed to. No. Now you talk about the Arizona game. Mm. Arizona's a good football program, okay? It's a good football program well, now. What did they do to USC? Man, that, that, exactly. In UCLA. Yes. Exactly. So they're bowl eligible. They're bowl teams that we're talking about. So now you talk about Oregon State. Right. They had Oregon State in the dogfight. A bowl team. Mm -hmm. This is a team that's going to a bowl. Yeah. You know, and so when you start looking at that, you're looking and you're saying to yourself, there's a lot of promise and hope, and he's not even gotten his players – that he's going to get both in recruiting and the transfer portal. And isn't it safe to say next year's schedule will be a little easier if they go on to the Big 12, right? Uh, it might It might be. There's no yeah, Oklahoma be I mean, it, 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 it might be. But even if it's not, I, I don't care. Forget the record. Right, Richard? Just forget the record. Can he right. coach? Right. Yes. yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And can he recruit? Big yeah, yes. Well, yeah. That, that, Big yes. He don't even need it. <laughs> As he said to me when I asked him about recruiting when we were up there, he said, baby, I ain't got to do all of this. <laughs> he, go, he picked up the phone. He said, I'm good. <laughs> that's what he said. He said, I'm good, baby. You ain't got to worry. I'm good. <laughs> and so that's recruiting in itself. Yeah. Bingo. All right. Up next, Micah speaks out. Uh-oh. Against Tua? Seriously? Micah. Micah.
<laughs> oh my god. No mercy, no mercy, no mercy. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.